What's up guys, today we're gonna to talk to you about how to grow your Instagram page and how we took ours from 1,000 to over 30,000 in under a year. We're gonna get straight into the tips. Let's get started. Two quick power tips before we jump into the strategy, you guys. If you long press on the Instagram app, it's actually the quickest way to make a story post and I'm using it frequently, huge time savings. And also, for your photos, you wanna do an eight by 10 vertical crop in many cases because it fills more of the screen and it's a better experience for the users as they scroll through and view your photos. Okay, let's get into it. These are in no specific order, but this is everything we have done to go from 1,089 followers to over 30K plus followers. The first thing I wanna mention, guys, is posting more. I've been striving for three posts a day for the last year, so that means over 1,000 posts. If you're posting, let's say, once a day, you know, you're making over 300 posts in one year, that's fine and dandy, but let's say uh, we'll use a round number. Every post got you 10 new followers. Well, you're gonna have about 3,500 followers after one year if you were to post once a day right? But let's say you stepped it up and started posting three times a day. I would even like to step it up to four or five times. Uh, and you posted over 1000 posts in one single year. Well, then if every post were to get you 10 followers, all of a sudden you have 10 K followers in one year. But we have even amped it up more than that. I'm going to tell you all the steps on how you've just absolutely got to start posting more. That is one of the key factors to our growth this last year in 2019 and going into 2020. Next, we're going to talk about maxing out hashtags. We have used 30 hashtags, which is the the max and uh, just about every post over the last year and I don't vary them which uh, could go against popular belief I literally have maybe had 10 different 20 different hashtags in rotation this last year that I have like altered out depending on what it is I'm posting but what I've done is I've used a, a website called all dash hashtag.com all hashtag.com which I'll link down in the description for you guys you can literally put in any word or key or phrase and it's gonna generate the top 30 hashtags for that word if there is 30 available and so that is exactly what I've done to max out my hashtags. For instance, my page is mainly fishing posts up to this point, and I have looked up the word fishing, and I've gotten the top 30 hashtags for that uh, word, and then I go ahead and I include that into my post. Whether you include that into the main body of your post or into the comment makes no difference from what I've noticed. But I do make sure to max it out. The thing is, if you're not utilizing hashtags, especially if you're a large page, you're not gonna get anybody who's searching keywords to find your post. Nobody who's searching a hashtag is gonna find your post, and so you have to include hashtags. It's important to use 30, but not to go over 30, because what happens is it will just delete all the text in your post, and you'll end up with a blank post. So you have to do the 30, and that's that. The text also matters within the body of your post. You've got your photo, of course, but then what you say also has a lot to do with the engagement on your post. Maybe I would post a picture of a fishing rod and reel, for example, but within the post, I mention more details about the specific gear I was using, being informative, providing value, or even just talking about my day or providing a funny caption. Uh, providing value or entertainment should be your number one goal with your captions. Otherwise, you're just wasting that extra space that could be utilized to help people engage with your content and also build that stronger connection with your followers. So I think you have to write longer captions here in 2020. It is a great underdog within the Instagram post and a lot of people are missing the boat by just doing a simple one-liner, uh, my opinion. Next up guys, let's go ahead and talk about your bio. They say first impressions mean everything and so why not provide a good one with me? I've always tried to keep it clean and just provide a few simple things such as I'll show you my current layout and I'll even try and uh, post that down into the description so that you can go ahead and maybe do some sort of copy paste idea. I believe if you go into your bio and try and type out a layout similar to mine uh, within the Instagram app, it won't work. But if you go ahead and type it out in your notes and you go ahead and just copy and paste that into your bio, then you can go ahead and get that good look that people are going for these days. Maybe include simple things such as your location, other social medias. You may notice that we have the bio maxed out with story highlights. You can always set up your one link to maybe your website or maybe you have a YouTube channel. This current moment, it's the TikTok account. And also I've got my location. It's just a few simple things, clean and effective. Let people get to know you from your bio. The first impressions do mean a lot. So go ahead and get that set up. Again, I'll leave it down in the description for you. Okay guys, and since I mentioned story highlights, one of the things that does matter so much these days is your story and keeping an active one. And by active, I mean more than five posts a day for sure. With your story, you're able to give people a behind the scenes. Let's say you're a fitness page and your behind the scenes could be meals you're eating throughout the day. Let's say you're a car enthusiast and you're always posting these car posts. Your story could be working on the cars, getting new parts, etc. Utilizing your story is really just a way to keep your feed very clean with this typical type of content you post, but then also by varying up in your story, almost getting a larger 
larger following and more diverse following. Example for me, I'm mainly fishing posts, but a lot of my followers are maybe more fitness oriented because of my CrossFit story posts, or maybe they're into food and so they see all the stuff I eat because I'm always posting it up. Or another example is I get a lot of musicians because of the drum posts that I make on my story. So it's, an, it's just an opportunity to diversify the content while still keeping that similarity within your feed on all your regular posts. I always try and give people behind the scenes and get closer connected with my fans and followers, which I just consider friends and family. It's so fun interacting with all you guys, which brings me to my next point, which is DMs. You have to reply to your DMs if you're trying to build a personal connection with everybody within your following. I have replied to every single DM up to this point, and of course, that could change on a dime with how many are inflowing on a daily basis, but for me, it's no different than getting 50 text messages a day. If you get 50 texts a day, you'll reply to 50 texts. It's the exact same thing, and it means so much to everyone who's following your account if you get back to them, and so we do our best to reply to every single DM, and that is something I believe you should do as well. While we're on the topic of the story, it actually becomes even more valuable after you cross that 10,000 follower mark when you can start doing swipe ups. You can include links to maybe a product or service that you offer or recommend, and they become very powerful for brand deals. Once you start uh, growing a larger following, you may get sponsorships and brand deals where you can start doing swipe ups to the products that they offer. So if you guys have already hit 10,000 followers, drop a comment on how much those swipe ups have improved your Instagram game. And also if you're working your way there or know somebody who is working their way there, please go ahead, share this video. I would appreciate nothing more than to get this video out to the masses. And the way we can do that is only through your help. I only have so much reach. And so if you're getting any value out of this video, please share it with a friend you know who's also looking to build their Instagram. Let's get back into it. All right, next up is engagement groups. I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about these. They're somewhat controversial, I suppose. You just gotta use them for the right reasons and identify the fact that there's an end goal with the engagement groups, so what are they? An engagement group is a group of people with inside messages on Instagram. I think you can max them out at like 20 people or somewhere around there. You can find them just by reaching out to people within your genre of content that you're creating and asking them if they know of anybody in these engagement groups. And you'll come across some people who are in engagement groups. You can go ahead and ask to get added and to get added you have to do your part the whole point of these groups is that everyone puts their newest posts into the group and everyone within that group goes and likes and comments and remains active within the group with those quick likes and comments your post is more likely to be boosted by the Instagram algorithm and to the explore page for more people to discover you and find your posts so some people will use engagement groups just to get quick likes and comments but those are not the genuine comments from true people who are following you for reasons because of your post Post, they are <laughs> it's it's like a fake comment almost that's 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 what people might say it's a fake comment I think the biggest benefit I received from the engagement groups was hardly even the likes and comments that wasn't the point but yes they probably did help my post get some more exposure while I was in that early building stage uh, but the the key thing for me in the engagement groups was networking with these other like-minded individuals who are also like let's say within the fishing genre figuring out what tactics are working within Instagram right here and now and really that's that with engagement groups they're really not a long-term tactic it's really early on in your pages growth that you want to maybe utilize these to go ahead and get those likes and comments and get pushed out potentially by the algorithm and then get discovered now guys let's talk about the time of day you make your posts for me the time of day doesn't matter all I'm saying is I don't really prioritize timing of posting over things like consistency and just posting over the long term and if you're making a lot of posts then timing means even less because you're constantly posting throughout the day so Maybe you do have followers that are more active in the morning or midday or late at night. Well, if you post three times a day, you can hit all those times. If you post five times a day, you can hit all those times. If you post once a day, you're limiting yourself. And so that goes back to the quantity. But I don't allow time of day to get in the way. I have even made posts at 2 a.m. in the morning because I wanted to hit my number and get my posts in. And uh, those posts may have done fantastic. You will probably get less engagement uh, if you post after, let's say, 12 midnight to 6 or 7 a.m. But other than that, I think anything goes. So as far as timing, I would just make sure you're consistently posting a lot on Instagram and you won't have to worry about it and you will get phenomenal results. You can even look in your analytics and I'm about to tell you more about that to see when your followers are the most active. But the thing is, I've noticed phenomenal results morning, midday, night, and everything in between. So I'm not gonna tell you one time is the best when really consistency is king. 
Guys, I almost left this one out of the video. I'm so glad I came back to this because this is absolutely critical. You have to switch your account over to a business account if you're below 10,000 followers. Uh, once you hit 10,000, you can also switch it and transition to a creator account, which is now what I have, which just shows some more maybe analytics that the business side would not show. I, I honestly don't even remember. It's been a while since I've switched it, but the business account is a must. Once you switch your account over to a business account, that is what actually allows you to now go to any one of your posts and see that promote icon to promote your posts and put a little money behind them to get more exposure. I'm gonna show you why that matters, of course, on this next video I put out about those promoting posts, but it absolutely matters. You can do things that you would not be able to if your account was not business, like go over here to the Insights tab, and you can see statistics on your post. You can see activity, such as when your uh, followers are active. I don't remember exactly what all business adds, but it adds so much more to your analytics and your data that you wouldn't be able to see if you just had a standard profile. I can all but guarantee you every larger page you see, anybody using Instagram for a living or even just growing their pages and maybe 100K plus accounts, 50K plus accounts, I can, I can tell you they're a business account and if they're not, they're missing the boat because it shows you so many insights and analytics you aren't seeing otherwise and it allows you to make those promotions. So switch your account over to business and you'll be able to view things like your audience. You can see exactly how many followers you've gained in the last week. You can see your daily follow count, who's, uh, who's following you, who's unfollowing you. There's so much value to this. You can see the top locations people are viewing your posts in. You can see the age groups. You can see the, uh, you can see the gender, like what percentage is men versus women so you know who to promote your post to. It's absolutely insane. You have to be doing this. You have to be a business account. Let's get back to the other pointers. Also, I've come to find out that varying things up like doing short clips can also make a big difference versus even just a photo. So if you include some video posts, you might notice you get more follows per post off of the videos. And so then you might gear your content more towards those short clips. For me, when I were to make a fishing vlog, for instance, I would maybe trim it down to just the highlights of the highlights and put it at 60 seconds or less for Instagram. And those posts would frequently be the ones that early on in my growth would gain a lot more followers than just a picture post because maybe people could get that more personal connection with you through the video, uh, et cetera, and so it may lead to more followers as well. I think you should vary up your content from pictures and videos. I really wanna to talk to you about promoting your posts. It's huge, and I've actually invested quite a bit into the Weston Smith page on promoting posts, but I'm gonna to talk to you guys about that. It, it deserves its own video, so go ahead and subscribe and hit the notifications bell. I'm dropping that one soon. In fact, if it's already live, it will be in the description of this video, and why right now is the time, because prices are going up very soon. So be looking out for that. Let's get on to the next steps. Next, guys, let's stop and take a second to talk about giveaways, which can be so powerful for building your page. Some of our more successful giveaways have helped us gain over 2,000 followers, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what we do to make them simplistic for your followers and also include something that your following will love to help you get better results from them. So for me, it was almost always a fishing giveaway, and I included things like a rod and reel, always of quality. That was something that was very important to me. Include something that your followers would truly like. I didn't wanna make it something generic like a GoPro, because then people are just gonna comment any, any of their friends that might not even be interested in the type of content that you put out rather than just getting a GoPro. So include something that has to do with the type of content you put out. I think that's gonna absolutely help. It is key to also maybe put a little money behind those posts, help promote it and get maximum exposure, which we'll talk about in that future video, but also make the requirements very simple for your giveaway. For me, it was always like, drop a like on the post, follow the account, and tag one person per comment. This is key because some people might say, uh, tag your friends below. Well, if you say tag your friends below, they might tag five people in one comment and you have you know, 100 comments in your post rather than 1,000 comments in your post if people were just doing them individually. So I like to say each additional comment is an additional entry into your giveaway. And I use uh, a website, what, what's the website I use? I use the website commentpicker.com to pick my winner. You can actually link it to your Instagram account and you can have it select a random comment from within the post and it helps you select your winner and then boom, you have done your giveaway and you have probably gained quite a bit of followers from it, but you also wanna make sure you're just consistently putting out the great content to keep those followers active when the fact is you'll notice there might be a slight drop off after your giveaways because people who didn't win might have only been following you to get that item and so that is fine. Just understand that you're gonna have to keep producing great content to keep these folks around and that is the giveaway portion of today's video. Also, if you guys are curious about the stabilizer I'm using, I'm gonna drop that down in the description for you guys. This thing's pretty killer. You see what it's capable of. I mean, it's just, it's pretty ridiculous. Anyways, 
down in the description if you're interested. Just wanna make sure I left you with a great summary for the giveaways. You wanna make sure that the requirements are as easy as possible and the item is as good as possible to really maximize the benefits on your giveaways. Partnering up on giveaways can also work. I've done it a few times, but it just depends on the situation and the influencer making that post. We've partnered up with an account, for instance, that said to win the item in their giveaway, you had to follow a list of accounts, and I believe it was close to 20 accounts, all in phishing. And so, like, who's to say they would like my content more than the next person's? Frequently, the folks who follow you from those types of giveaways may not be as interested in your account as they are the item that's up for grabs. So anytime I was a must follow in any of these giveaways, I was making sure I was cranking out really good content during that giveaway period and also being very active on my story. That way, even though these people who are interested in this phishing item might be following 20 other phishing accounts to win this item, I was gonna be the one that was the most active and in front of them as much as possible and really gain their following and keep them around and engaging on our posts. I'm not gonna talk a lot about follow unfollow, although I do believe it deserves a mention. For me, I've never ran follow unfollow. I kind of frown upon it, it's just my perspective. Uh, my brother has done a follow unfollow on his fitness account in the past and, the, and then it got shut down for that. Um, there's Obviously there's ways to minimize the chances of that happening, but the fact is, anytime I look at an account that's following thousands of people, especially if they're following more people than they have followers, it instantly discredits their account in my opinion and in many people's eyes, uh, maybe not the smaller accounts who are looking to grow, but for sure the larger accounts and the businesses that may reach out trying to partner with you on posts, you'll probably get less sponsorship deals if you have, as if you're just doing follow on follow, it's not gonna lead to many genuine followers as well. People are catching on to the fact that there's a lot of people running these. And so follow on follow is not a great way to grow my opinion, unless you're just using it from the very beginning and you found a good way to maximize its benefits and minimize its drawbacks. I would just steer clear of follow on follow. It's not a technique I've ever used, so I don't think there's any point in me trying to expand upon it in this video. I just think that if you're following a lot of people and then unfollowing them, that's not gonna create the best following for your account. You're replying to your comments. You absolutely have got to reply to your comments. Let's say you're a page that's getting uh, your first batch of comments in. You're starting to get like one comment per post. You're starting to get five comments per post and on up. Uh, to not reply to those comments is almost like telling those people you don't care that they commented. You know, like, thank you for liking the post and dropping that comment, but uh, you don't even reply to them, just makes no sense to me. So of course, this is if you have the time because you're not getting overwhelming amounts of comments that you cannot keep up, that is a whole nother story. But let's say you're looking to grow your page and really be engaged with your following and yet you won't reply to their comments. That just blows my mind. So for me, if you're getting anywhere between one to 20 comments on your Instagram posts and you don't have the time to reply to every single one of those, then I don't think you're gonna grow your page as fast you're not in tune with everyone who's willing to take the time out of their day to drop a positive or negative comment. Taking the time out of their day either way. I reply to everyone whether it's positive or negative. I don't delete comments, I just reply to them. I think it provides so much more value for your page. It's only gonna lead to a more genuine relationship with your followers and it's something you have to be doing. Next up guys, and this is a pretty big key right here, is adding location. This is similar to hashtags. Let's say you're in the Nashville, Tennessee area and you are always adding Nashville to your posts or the suburbs of Nashville, right? Then you're gonna get people who are just searching Nashville, seeing your posts, whether it's because it's a top post of that area or it's a new post, you'll always be getting new followers from people who would maybe not even have searched your account because they cared about that type of content until they've seen a post by you in the feed of that location. So for me, I always include location. It's literally just one more tool in your arsenal. You have to be absolutely including location on every single post, hands down. If you're not posting location, you just have to understand there's tons of people who are getting discovered because other people are. You should be using a location in every single post and maybe you don't wanna say the exact spot you're at of the exact location. Let's say you're in a smaller town though and there's not too many posts in that area. There's such a high likelihood of you being discovered as the top influencer in your area because you consistently add the location of your town or city as opposed to just not adding a location at all. A lot more people will discover you when they search that area and uh, maybe they're just, maybe they're looking for a nice place to go for dinner that night and they discover your page. Maybe they're looking for a place to go and work out and they discover your page. The opportunities are endless but you must be adding location. You have to understand there's not one thing that's gonna lead you to insanely fast growth on Instagram and there's no shortcut. I mean, having something go viral is 
highly unlikely for the masses and the majority. I think it's much more practical to build your Instagram through hard work and consistency than it is to rely on maybe something going viral. With that being said, every little piece adds up. All these little things do matter. And to include all of these in every single post is gonna make the difference and why you're gonna... The next thing I did to get discovered also was tagging people. I would frequently tag the people that I wanted to try and collaborate with or the businesses that I wanted to try and do business with or use their products and maybe get some sort of a deal through and I did that by tagging them. So if there are people you'd like to connect with, just make sure you're always tagging them within your posts and I think you have a much higher likelihood of getting discovered by some of these larger pages and businesses and that can make a huge difference in your growth. It really can take a few collaborations to get some amazing results and I think it's gonna highly benefit your page. Next up guys, I'm gonna join Zeke over here on the couch for this one. I'm gonna talk to you guys about IGTV and going live. So for IGTV, this is allowing you to create more longer form videos you can include videos up to 15 minutes long and maybe a video that only got you 1,000 views as a 60 second clip if you had included that whole video on IGTV up to 15 minutes had it could have got tens of thousands of views you really never know where things are going to take off and so I think it's best to just diversify and uh, utilize all aspects of the platform because it's just another way of getting discovered if one of those videos gets a lot of exposure it's another way for people to find you and I think including IGTVs within your posts each week is gonna just do nothing but help out in the long run and going live is also key. I, I like to frequently go live to make new announcements, always try and answer questions and welcome people who are joining in on your live videos. And once again, I think it's one of those things that just deepens that friendship with your following, which I think matters so much and growing a lasting Instagram account and a strong Instagram account as well, if that is your goal. All right, guys, we're coming to a close here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share this with somebody you know, and let's go ahead and talk about the final things we can do to grow our Instagram page in 2020 and into the coming years. We gotta make sure we understand it takes hard work. I spend almost, if you look at the activity on my Instagram, you can go ahead and view that with inside of your page. I spend almost two hours a day on Instagram, not scrolling. I spend those two hours not making posts. Once you get a system dialed in, it does not take long to make a few posts a day. You have your pictures that you edit, your quick text that you type up. It doesn't take long to post three times a day. But I spend most of my time these days on Instagram is actually replying to my comments and replying to my DMs because I think that matters so much. With that being said, let's include these last few key pointers and get you guys on your way to growing your pages. I do think we need to talk a little bit about the mindset as well as the tactics here because the thing is, not only does this take hard work, but you're gonna lose followers too. There's gonna be those fluctuations and you're gonna have higher periods where you're gaining a lot of followers per day. It's not uncommon for me to have periods where I'm gaining well over 100 followers per day. I might literally have a time when it drops all the way back down. Even for a page of my size now closing in on 35,000 followers as of the making of this video, I might have a day where I only gain 30 to 60 followers. And really, those days are even closer to 100 followers, but the fact is I might have 30 to 40 that unfollow me that day as well and so you have to understand that unless you're growing you're dying and so you have to just try and stay on the forefront of what tips and tricks are working so I'm constantly looking up new videos trying to figure out exactly what is working currently and make sure I am utilizing all the newest tools with inside the Instagram app to grow that's something I believe you guys should be looking into as well if you don't think I expanded enough on any one topic just go ahead and Google them or look up another video on how the engagement groups work or how the hashtags can maximize your posts but the thing is you have to be utilizing all these things if you want to grow. But again, the fact is you have to be willing to put in the work and adapt to the changes within Instagram and any of these other social platforms if you're really trying to grow your network. That's what we're hoping to achieve for you within this video. All right, guys, I think we're gonna wrap this thing up with a little talk on shout outs and then we'll go ahead and close this thing out. I just want to point out that when you're going for a shout out to grow your page, you're really not benefiting yourself. Let, let's say, I'm just trying to think of how to help people understand that a shout out is not gonna get you more of a genuine follower as just making those consistent posts, providing value or entertainment for your fans. So let's say your favorite influencer or one of the largest influencers you know gave you a shout out and you instantly got a million followers. Let's say that, right? Are you putting in the work to keep those million followers now? Do you feel good about how many posts you're making on a day-to-day -day basis to really deserve that following of one million followers? These are little things that I ask myself sometimes. It's like if I was, if I was deserving of a million followers, I would have them right now. 
there's some way that we can all improve and I believe I could have a million followers right now if I was doing something maybe a little bit different but the fact is I'm not worried about getting there today and tomorrow I'm worried about getting there period but through the long term the long term vision to me is what matters more than that short term gain let's say you get 10,000 followers because of a shout out and you don't be as active as a 10,000 follower account should be to really keep those fans around you're just going to have that 10,000 follower number on your account and you're not going to be getting any comments you're not going to be getting any likes these people probably only followed you because the other person said to follow you not because they care about your content which is what you want you want to be posting content that people love and that's why they follow you so I don't really value the shout outs too much even for myself I've gotten some shout outs from many larger pages now at this point I remember one day I did a YouTube collaboration with a larger influencer and they gave me an Instagram shout out on that YouTube video I actually gained like 1,000 to 1,500 followers pretty quickly after that video along with the fact that I was posting a lot etc and I do believe that a lot of that came from him but the fact is they were probably following me because he said to follow me. They might not have been following me because of anything I had done that really deserved that following and maybe those people have even dropped off and hit that just based off of the credentials of that other person. So I think it's so valuable going out and putting in the work to get your own following. And with that, I want to close this out for you guys. I won't keep you any longer, except I know you're going to be looking forward to the promotions video because of how much it's helped me. It's really an absolute game changer. I believe if you're not promoting your posts, you're missing the boat. And in 2020, you have to because the prices are going up to promote your posts to get the same amount of reach and that is a big deal. So we're going to talk about that in one of the next few uploads I make and that is probably going to be almost equally as long as this video just on one subject because I am going to probably, uh, honestly I might make a few people mad with how much I'm going to be giving away to you guys because I just don't care and I want you out there creating and growing your pages and I believe the investment that you put into your page is going to come back to you tenfold and I'll explain how it has for me and how we've received so much and free product and also brand deals now because of the pages growth that we've seen in the last year that makes it 100% worth it if you're serious about growing your page. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video and I hope you enjoyed this one. Peace. <gasps>